Ryan here with Quantum Wellness. Today, I'd like to talk to you about Flowistat and 344. This is a peptide I have used in the past and I intend to use again during my next build phase. Disclaimer, I am not a medical doctor and the information provided here is for entertainment purposes only. Always consult with a healthcare professional before considering the use of any experimental substances. <clears throat> so what is Flowistat and 344? At the end of this, you're going to understand the mechanism of action, dosage, cycle lengths, potential side effects, and the benefit. So the mechanisms of action. So Flowistatin 344 is a naturally occurring protein that plays a significant role in muscle growth by inhibiting the activity of myostatin, a protein that limits muscle growth. Myostatin acts as a negative regulator of muscle development, meaning it prevents muscles from growing too large. Flowistatin 344 binds to myostatin, effectively neutralizing its function and allowing for increased muscle growth. By reducing the in inhibitory effects of myostatin, Flowistatin 344 can promote enhanced muscle hypertrophy, this is increase in muscle size, and potentially even increase muscle hyperplasia, which is the increase in number of muscle cells in total. Due to the experimental nature of Flowistatin 344, there is no standardized dosage. However, based on reports and user experiences, typical dosage, dosages are as follows. So the standard dose. Users will typically administer between 100 to 200 micrograms per day. The administration is um, compounds it Compound is usually administered via subcutaneous injection, so i.e. injections underneath the skin like um, insulin. The daily dose can be split into smaller doses throughout the day to maintain more consistent levels in the body. It's important to note that these dosages are not officially recommended and should be approached with caution because Flowistatin 344 is not approved for human use Dosing is essentially experimental. The cycle length. The cycle length for flow statin 344 usage is also variable, with users typically following short cycles to help minimize any potential risk. And a common cycle usually lasts between two to four weeks. Post cycle considerations. After completing a cycle, it's advisable to take a break of several weeks to allow the body to recover and to avoid any potential side effects from pr prolonged use. Again, prolonged use has not been studied. Given the lack of long-term research, many users opt for shorter cycles to reduce the likelihood of adverse effects. So the potential side effects of Flowistatin 344 carries several potential side effects, which many of them are not fully understood due to the experimental status of the compound. But the number one is abnormal muscle growth. The risk of excessive or disproportionate muscle, muscle growth, growth leading to functional issues or imbalances in the physique. Possible localized muscle enlargement near the injection site if you don't rotate it. Potential for organ and tissue enlargement. Un unintended enlargement of organs or other tissues due to the inhib inhibition of myostatin in various parts of the body. There could be a potential disruption of muscle fiber function. So muscle imbalances or weaknesses due to excessive inhibition of myostatin, increased risk of tendon and ligament injuries due to rapid muscle growth. There is a potential for immune system reactions. So um, that the site of injection could run in infections, inflammation, or there could be an irritation. And there could be a systemic, systemic uh, immune reaction such as fever or fatigue. There are unknown long-term effects. So theoretical risks of cancer due to unchecked cell growth is, is a potential. Uh, potential metabolic dis disruption disruptances such as insulin resistance or other metabolic disorders have been reported as well um, or has been suggested. 
cardiovascular uh, issues, possible heart enlargement, which could lead to serious cardiovascular complications, including heart failure, hormonal imbalances, <laughs> disruption of hormonal pathways, leading potentially to imbalances affecting overall health. And then of course, the last one is going to be legal and ethical risks because unregulated use carries legal risks and variability in product purity and dosages. It is banned in many sports due to its performance enhancing effects. But again, these are all generalizations and not, oh, it, not necessarily going to be a huge risk. Despite the risks, it is pursued for its potential benefits, especially in the context of muscle growth. It has been shown to enhance mu muscle growth, significant increases in muscle hypertrophy and potentially hyperplasia due to the inhibition of myostatin, obviously. Improved strength and performance. So many users experience gains in strength and athletic performance due to the increase in muscle mass. Body composition improvement. So there is a potential for, for a reduction in body fat percent, percentage as muscle mass increases. You're going to speed up your metabolism, leading to a more defined physique. It should help also with the rehabilitation and recovery of uh, injuries because possible <clears throat> um, because in these settings, uh, it helps to assist with any muscle wasting conditions or recovery from these injuries by increasing more muscle mass. So flow statin 344 is a very powerful myostatin inhibitor with the potential to significantly enhance muscle growth and athletic performance. Again, due to its experimental nature, the lack of long-term studies and the associated risks, it should be approached with caution. So those considering the use should thoroughly research the compound, consult with their healthcare professionals and weigh the potential benefits and risks of this particular peptide. I personally have used it. Some of the studies have been uh, conducted in humans in this uh, particular peptide. And in those studies, they were looking at postmenopausal women, one cycle of flow statin 344 showed significant muscle improvement and if memory serves me correct, it was about 24 or 26% muscle growth. Um, and that was just from the myostatin blocker, which lasted up to as long as two years. As I said before, I've used this particular peptide in my, my uh, cycles in the past, and I intend to use this again moving forward. I generally will do one to 200 uh, micrograms into the muscle I've trained. Um, and then that way I have more of a balance throughout the um, throughout the entire body. So especially when I have one particular muscle group that I want to bring up, that's usually where I'll make my injections. If I'm doing 100 micrograms, then I will do, and I'm doing, you know, left and right, then I do um, a, a 50 in one butt cheek, a 50 in the other butt cheek to give me the 100. If I'm doing 200, I do 100 and 100. Or if I'm doing it in the shoulders, again, that's how I split it up. I hope that this helps you guys. I hope you like this information. If you want to learn more about what I personally am doing or about peptides in general, let me know in the comments and I will happily start putting together more information as I continue with uh, creating content. I would love any and all feedback, but for now, peace out. Train hard, recover harder, and let's try to live as active of a lifestyle for as long as possible.